Lord, I'm yours for all time. And I'll give you anything that I ever thought was mine. I will follow your way for the rest of my life. It's a strange day. thing, I thought, when I first read this for Paul, and I'm not talking about just the other day, that Paul talks about what he had entrusted to God. Mm -hmm. Right? Because I promise you that God's entrusted. What do we have to give him? The earth is the Lord's in the fullness thereof. It all belongs to him. Isn't that not true? So what's that? What is ours to give to the Lord? Well, you want to read Romans chapter 12, verse 1 for me. And we're going to, Alice says we'll read from the New American Standard, which has just one little difference from the King James because they understood it and it was implied. Verse 1. Romans 12, 1. Okay. Nice and loud. I urge you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. That's what we have to offer God, is us. Yes. So I thought about this, and I think I, this is what I ended with last, last week as we were going. There, there are only two things that I can think of that I have the right, really, to entrust to God. My life and my wife. Mm. Because my life is a gift from God. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. My, our life is a gift. We didn't do anything to earn it. We didn't do anything to deserve it. It's purely and simply a, a gift that he has given us. Mm -hmm. And it says, an excellent wife who can find. That's a gift from the Lord. Yes. yes. Okay. And giving what is most precious to you is indeed worship. You know the account of Abraham, when God called Abraham and told him to take his son, his only son, Isaac, up on Mount Moriah, right, and offer him unto God. He was asking, this was the great promise. This was the promise that Abraham had been waiting for. This was the promise that had thrilled Abraham, that he would have a son, even in his old age, right? So he has the son, has Isaac. Now God says, I want you to take him up the mountain and give him to me, offer him to me. And he was faithful to do that. Right? Yes. When God commanded, he heard, he obeyed. But when he got up there, the Lord did not require Isaac. He said, no, I'll supply the sacrifice. Because that was a foreshadowing of God providing his son as the only acceptable sacrifice. Right. But Abraham had been willing to give that thing that was most precious. And that's the first example in the Bible of where the English word worship is actually used, mm -hmm. right? Abraham, he took his servants, his young men, went to the foot of the mountain, and then he says to them, you stay here with the donkey, and I and the lad will go over there, and we will worship and return to you. When they were headed up the mountain, Abraham said, we're going up to worship. Right. Right? He offered to the Lord that which was most precious to him. Okay, my life, should I say my life is precious to me? If you say your life is not precious to you, okay, and I and I understand this is kind of kind of an oxymoron, because it has no, you know, I, I have surrendered my life, but my life is not my own, for I have died and my life is hidden with Christ and God, right? But by the same token, what do I have more that I can offer God than my own life? And when I so I entrust I trust Him with my life, because it was a gift from Him in the first place. I trust Alice's life with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we've that's been put to the test. Mm -hmm. But we know that he is faithful and he loves her more than I love her, and I love her a lot. <laughs> so I trust him. There's a danger today, and that danger is that so often inside the church today, they are trying to get you to trust God with your money. Yes. By giving money to them. And then God's going to give you more. It's like when you give it to him, he owes you now. It's a danger. And yes, it's a heresy. It is a truth that as a man sows, so shall he reap. It is a truth that if you give unto God, he's going to bless you. Yes. But if that's your motivation for doing it, you're missing the truth entirely. Because that's not worship. If you're, if you're giving money to God in order to get more back, you're not entrusting. You're, you're, you're treating him like a financial counselor. 
I'm not going to. It's a heresy. Be on your guard. It's a dangerous heresy. If I speak with the tongues of men and angels, but do not have love, I become a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I give all my possessions to feed the poor, and if I surrender my body to be burned, but do not have love, it profits me nothing. <laughs>